not saying that the game doesn't have to pivot a few times to find it after that. I'm not saying absolutely, yeah, yeah. Oh, once yeah. it's set, it's set in stone. I don't want anyone to think that's the case. What I'm but saying if, is, if you can talk about it, then you can change it. Exactly, that's the thing. When we do the workshop, it pinpoints. Here's the thing, and then we fix it. It's like, oh, cool. Now we know what it is, where the variation's coming from. We put it back on track. What I'm saying is, you're all setting off on a journey without a map, and then you're surprised you all end up in different places. What I'm saying is, if I give you a map, would that be helpful to you? That's that's where we're going with this model. You know, that's what's yeah. missing. So okay, so so. I'm a leader in game dev. You're saying, look, grab some of the people that are following you. Grab some of the, your peer leaders. Grab yeah. some people. Hop yeah. into a room. Have an open conversation. What are we making? Like, what, not what are we making in terms of stuff. What is this experience? What, what's the experience? Why are what's we making it? What is, why is this unique? Why is this game unique? What's the difference? We're putting together a unique combination of things. Some of them may be the art style. Some of them may be features. Some of them may be the tone or an emotion. Some may be the setting. It comes in different forms, right? It's different. We're putting together a collection of different things to produce a new why, a new thing. Mm -hmm. What is the why? How would you describe it? But it's not the features. What are they producing? What are the features producing? What's the tone producing? What's the artwork producing? I don't mean emotions either. Not like, oh, it's a, it's a moody, atmospheric. We can see that. That's in the art style. I get, I get, it's even difficult for me to talk about it without giving you the solution in a, in a way. You know, but... It should be interesting to them enough that, that it's difficult to talk about. How come our core job, the core reason we do this thing, is also simultaneously the hardest thing to talk about? And nobody, mm -hmm. I've got the interviews behind, beside me here, the, 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 the transcripts, nobody can talk about it. Nobody, from billion dollar companies down to mm -hmm. you know, small indies. They all talk about features and conceptual stuff, but you try and dig into the, the, the experience, what's it? What's it doing? Why is it different from those games? They keep going back to features or something you can point to. Right. I think, I, I, you yeah. know, I part of me gives a little bit of a... Uh, you, you talked at the very beginning. There's too much in the world for us to grasp. If I actually had to absorb everything I saw mm. when I woke up you, in the morning, I'd be frozen. You'd be a wreck. Yeah. Right? You have, yeah. to, you have to filter. And... It is interesting to me that in an industry with, filled with so many passionate people and gamers, maybe I would say it's not surprising that they attempt to leverage their prior experience with genres and games mm -hmm. um, to shortcut the conversation. And and so when, when they talk about the idea of, oh, well, what am I making? Oh, it's going to be a co-op roguelike, blah, 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 or something like that, right? Mm. It makes sense. And... And yet, the thing that you've said that underpins the problem there is when I experienced StarCraft 2 and my brother experienced StarCraft 2 or StarCraft, you know, Brood War mm -hmm. or whatever, we actually experienced it in subtly different ways because we're different people with different preconceived notions and different intentions of what we were trying to do. And so if I'm playing a single player, am I trying to play it through as fast as I can because that's how I think you're supposed to play this? Or is my thing always build a 200 out of 200 army right you know mm. max out what i can build and then just go crush the enemy in one big huge push mm. Mm. and and so when i attempt to shortcut well i'm making a strategy game and i go oh i know what that means we're gonna build a huge giant army and someone else is going with as few units as possible i'm gonna be as precise as possible and complete that that's what strategy means and it and you know Perhaps people have different, but, yeah. but there's there's different yeah, interpretations should... of these words and there's different assumptions that we build yes. in. And yeah. then we assume, uh, something my dad says, everybody assumes they're normative. Um, oh, yeah. And yeah. and it's not, yeah. you're not. We're all very <laughs> actually distinct different. from each other and exactly. different. And we approach all these problems with unique frames. You you mentioned an interesting word there, I wrote down, like um, underpinning. And I think this is getting to the root of the problem where... I was watching a podcast recently with Lex Friedman. I was interviewing, I may get the name wrong, uh, Jim Keller. Jim Keller, I think, is the guy that made the microprocessor, or part of the team that made a lot of microprocessor design. And he's talking about how microprocessors are designed. And he says, every 10 or 15 years, you're meant to throw all your work out and start again because there's new models and ways of thinking and stuff like that. But he said, people don't do it. They try and just optimize. And he was given this analogy, which I think I'm about to butcher, which applies to the game industry, I think, where some people... 
by luck or otherwise, sometimes finds a successful formula for a game. They make a successful first-person shooter or a racing game or insert thing here. And so they do that for a lot of their career. They know how to do it once and they make a few small tweaks. And maybe they get really good at that. They've learned the formula for baking uh, a certain game. I'm going to use the baking metaphor he used. But he's saying those people really know one recipe. They've hit across one recipe by luck or otherwise. And maybe they are lucky enough to use that their whole career. Good for them, right? But they don't know how to cook. If they have to pivot and they say, guys, we're not doing racing games anymore. We're making MOBAs or whatever, right? Because they don't know how to cook, they don't know the fundamentals, the underpinning of their discipline. They are out of luck. They have no idea how to deliver the player experience of another genre. They're like, but I know how to do, I know how to do this one thing. We don't make that anymore. We're making this other thing. But I'm really good at that one thing. I'm sure you are. We don't do that here. Damn, I don't know how this actually works. I only know how to apply the recipe. I don't know how to cook. I don't know the chemistry. I don't know the underlying fundamental principles of this field that would allow me to make a MOBA, a first-person shooter, a racing game, a platformer, an open-world game. I can make any of these because I know how the experience works. That's what I can do. And I can make anything you want. But I think, as you said, we see a lot of it in our industry. I know yeah. how to bake this cake. Did you enjoy this episode? If you did and are looking for more conversations like this one, join the Building Better Games Discord community. It's for leaders and producers in game dev who are frustrated with solving the wrong problems and who want to share experiences and learn how to lead and build better games. Check out the show notes to join. I'll see you there.